Hi, my name's Beth. I've been painting for about 10 years on glass and canvas items and, and, and any kind of home decor items you can think of. So I'm going to make you a few videos um, showing you how to do a few projects I've been doing for years. And if you'd like to see more, you just message me and let me know what you'd like to see. Feel free to look at my website and whatnot. Anyways, I'm going to start with a couple of poppy mugs. I always begin with a little bit of water. I've got enamel paints, folk art enamel paints. You don't add water with these. You can dunk in, wipe off, but never add water like a, not like a regular acrylic. And then you just basically put in some stems. Now you got to make it your design, so you always remember it's not really a matter of, uh, you know, what I'm painting or what someone else does. It's got to be something you enjoy and a look you like. I don't really think there's ever a wrong way with painting. People say a lot of things, but to me it's just, you got to have fun with it, enjoy it, and uh, just feel like uh, it's something you want to do. Now these are easy. Now these don't have to be straight, as you see. I've got ripples and bumps and crooked lines and I mean, not the most important part, but your important part will be your flower. Making sure it's fun and pretty. Now a lot of times when doing even a set, I don't like to do them the same. I like to vary it just to make it interesting. I'm not much into the matchy matchy things. So that makes it even easier. But uh, one thing if you're doing the stems, you do want to try and do different lengths. That gives it uh, just kind of an interesting look. Oops. There we go. See, fix that up. <laughs> See, I put my finger in it already. Shoot. Painting on glass and uh, other non porous surfaces is very forgiving. You make a mistake, you can just wipe it off or switch it up. See, I have paint all over me. If I get it on there, I will just give it a quick wipe and it'll be gone. Now this kind of paint is the kind you use, uh, you paint it on, you give it some time to cure, they say uh, an hour, I give it a lot longer, I give it a day if I can, just at least 24 hours, and then you heat set it in the oven, in a cold oven, at 350, and you uh, leave it in there for about half an hour, and I just leave the glassware in the oven and I uh, let it cool down on its own. And then it's ready. Now, I'm going to work on some poppies here. I usually do a little dab of red, a bit of white here and there. Mostly red though to start with. And then you can just lighten it up here and there, get a little smoosh of everything. But I just like to kind of get a few different colors going in it. Move it around, flatten it a bit so you got a crisper edge. And then you can just start making your poppies how you want. I usually start at the bottom. And I just like to do a nice wide end. And then I start doing what I would say is petals. Kind of the same edge where you are. A little too much paint there. Bring them in. And it's kind of like I said, it's a matter of what do you like and how do you want your piece of art to look. But for me, I like to kind of just get a basic shape. And then I'll come back in with some extra colors and I'll make it look a little different. So, moving on. Oh, see? I got a mistake there. So I'm going to just clean that up. So I'm be doing it that way, but 
we do is a good example to show you that you can just fix it right up. Whereas with many other paints you would not be able to. So these kind of paints are great for beginners just to get used to it. And again we're going to just make a nice shape how you want. And once the color is in, you can just kind of go with it. Again, I like to round. Sometimes it's nice, nice to have a little edge there. And like I said, we'll go back in about one minute and we'll uh, just kind of put a few different colors in there. And before you know it, this will be done. It's a very fast project. But it's fun and it really has great impact, I think, because of these striking colors combined together. When you get your reds and your yellows and your whites on top of the white mug, really stands out nicely. Yeah, we're almost done. One more. As you can see, I'm kind of hurrying along here, but I think you get the gist of it. I think once you've got your bottom, the main part about it is just kind of going from the top and pulling in, you know, here and there. Okay. So what I like to do now is give my brush a little wipe off, just so it's not quite so heavy again. I'm going to put some yellow in there, touch a white. And we're just going to use this to uh, go from maybe, oh, not even quite that much. From the top, very gently, and through. Okay, and then I'm going to make a little circle area for some of them so that they can have a an inside. As you can see, it's just a bit of a hollow. And again, we're going to do just the very tips. Oops, try that again. A little more yellow. Good. And again, hips. I'm making a shape here. Everything's got to just be um, fun, not fussy. Let's go along. Doesn't matter where you start. I mean, it's like the yellow to be a little darker right here where I'm going to bring it in. Bring it in. Okay. You can see some colors in there. I think the color variation is very important. If you want it to look interesting in any way, you've got to have more than one color usually. There we go. And the next one, and then a darker yellow, or brighter yellow again, like I said, just bring them in, and quick clean. I usually do all my painting in my studio downstairs. I don't have all my usual tools up here with me, but I'm sure these will do. As I said, get it wet. You want to make sure it's dry. Once you're done. Okay, I have some black here. I'm just going to put a bit of it in here and there. I'm not going to be fussy about it in any way because the more, the looser you paint without being as fussy, the better it usually turns out. And you want to put it in there. Make sure you don't have paint in your hands like me. 